happy to be here in person and not on Zoom. <laughs> Do we remember? <laughs> my, my high school reunion was on Zoom, which was no, truly no fun at all. <laughs> because I was homeschooled, so. <laughs> it was just me, you know. Thank you, that was my first joke. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But not my last, buckle up. Okay. <laughs> I recently moved and uh, my, my living situation, it's so much better. I was living with a couple, which was really uncomfortable because the guy, he kept trying to get me to do things, you know where I'm going? <laughs> that I was not interested in at all. Like the dishes <laughs> and the laundry. I was just like, dad, that is... <laughs> That is mom's job. <laughs> I'm so glad to be out of that sitch, let me tell you. <laughs> Never good living with family. <laughs> so I moved in with my sister and she's killing it. She's amazing. She's an overachiever, always has been. Uh, but my parents did the best job making me feel like we were at the exact same level. <laughs> and the perfect example is we were out to dinner celebrating because my sister had just been written up in the New York Times and the New Yorker <laughs> in the same week. Okay, we were very proud. London K, you can look her up. <laughs> Anyway, we were so proud. And then my dad turned to me and equally as proud goes, and Chase, you've been dog sitting. <laughs> my mom was like, that's our business woman. <laughs> They're so proud. <laughs> they hold us to different standards. Uh, <laughs> my sister's always been a go-getter, you know. I've always just been, just, just a stay putter, just, just very lazy. <laughs> That's why I was just thrilled when The Secret came out. <laughs> Do we know The Secret? Yeah, this is LA. We know The Secret. <laughs> if you don't know, it's a book. It says anything you want in life, you can have just by thinking about it. That's it. Pile of money. Pile of boyfriends. <laughs> punchline to this joke, you know what I mean? Like, anything, no action required. I was just like, sign me up. <laughs> you sign me up because I don't wanna, I don't wanna go through the paperwork. <laughs> but at this point, I read all the sequels to The Secret. There's The Power, The Magic, The Hero, The Lion, The Witch, The Wardrobe, all of them. And I have to tell you, it's starting to work because my vision board uh, clear what you're supposed to do. Uh, <laughs> it clearly asks for 100K, 100,000. And I don't want to brag, but I did kind of get that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. No. It's not. It's in student debt, but it is. <laughs> it is such a big number, you know. 
something's going on. And I feel like my student debt is worth it in a way. I got a phenomenal degree. I, I got, <laughs> you haven't even heard. <laughs> I got my degree in theater. Which, yeah, lots of theater majors came out. Okay. Were you a theater major? You were? Did you get a minor in anything? No. Okay. <laughs> I was smart. I got a minor. <laughs> I, I got a minor in dance, just in case. Just in case the whole theater thing doesn't work out, I do have something extremely reliable to fall back on. Um, <laughs> and it comes in handy, you know, like, do I know, do I know my times tables? No. Do I know my time steps? Yes, you bet your bottom dollar. Thank you. That was really hard. Thank you. <laughs> I learned this year that I'm non-essential. That's what. <laughs> My parents don't agree with it, but the government. They're <laughs> so adamant. <laughs> I cry a lot. Um... <laughs> It's because I'm a Pisces. It's because I'm a Pisces. Oh, God. Yeah, lots of Pisces came out. Yeah, I don't know what the science is behind it. Something to do with when we were born. Saturn was in Gatorade. I don't know, but uh, we're so emotional. I literally cry every episode of America's Got Talent. <laughs> Just simply because of America. I don't know if you've seen it, we're just overflowing with talent. But uh, any Pisces, just shout out your birthday. March 9th? March 9th? March 11th? What are those odds? You know what I mean? Oh my God. Wow. I Happy belated. Uh, I wish, I gotta be honest, I wish I was March 9th. That's a good one. March 11th, I found out last year, is the anniversary of COVID-19 being declared a health crisis. So that's when I celebrate. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna keep bringing it down. Uh, not only is my birthday coronavirus. <laughs> my half birthday. Some did the math. Okay. Uh, isn't this terrible? <laughs> it's bittersweet because a lot of people don't remember to celebrate their half birthday, but. <laughs> I never forget, so. Uh, <laughs> talking about crying a lot. Um, <laughs> I've been crying more than usual just because my, my boyfriend just broke up with me. Oh, uh, thank you. It was two years ago, but I was... Uh, <laughs> he said he broke up with me because he turned into my therapist. Not good. Really not good. I told my mom this. She goes, wow. Yeah, he was not a good therapist. 
We wish him the best of luck with his practice. <laughs> I have an actual therapist now, and things are going very well. So, oh, thank you. I you know. I think, I think he's gonna propose soon. <laughs> But I'm on the dating apps just in case, just for fun. And I've been confused by some profiles I've come across. Some guys don't put up a picture. And I do wonder, how's that going for them? I can't imagine any girl swiping right on a profile without a picture. Like, we know better. Unless you're Nancy Drew, right? And you're just like, oh, <laughs> a mystery. <laughs> is it going to be dinner and drinks or is it going to be my body in a bag in the river? Put up a picture. <laughs> my Nancy Drew impression. <laughs> it's just Samantha from Sex in the City. Just, oh. I, I do a great Samantha impression, if you couldn't tell. Uh, if she was here tonight, did, you, did anyone see the, um, the reboot, the Sex and the City? Oh, we liked it? No. Yeah, because Samantha wasn't in it. And she brought the sex and the, the really just bad writing and the over-the-top actor. Okay, this is my Samantha impression if she was here tonight. She'd look at you. What's your name? Chris? Chris? That's so, <laughs> that's so unique. That's so beautiful. Um, okay, so she'd look at Chris and she'd go, oh. <laughs> this is about to be really good. Okay, oh, Los Angeles. <laughs> More like Los Mangeles. I came up with that, thank you. I'm just gonna send this just straight to SNL is what I'm gonna do. Speaking of SNL, uh, I had a win recently. I was compared to Pete Davidson. Thank you. Not his career, his face. Uh, I don't know if you see it yet. Uh, there's a picture I posted on Instagram and all the comments were just like, wait, I thought that was Pete Davidson. And they're like, yeah, me too. I had to do a double take. My favorite comment, someone goes, you know what it is? They both have buttholes for eyes. You see it now? I don't know if that's a compliment, but <laughs> jokes on them because my eyes are blue, so <laughs> I don't know what's going on with his butthole. Uh, <laughs> anyways, dating. Back to dating. We got off track, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I hate dates. I hate dates. If a guy ever asks if I'll go out with him, my answer is always no. It's just an immediate no. But I'm very polite about how I turn them down. I usually say something like, yes. So, I go on a lot of dates. Uh, so on Bumble, it tells you you have to put your profession. I thought it would be super fun to say, I'm a motorcycle mechanic. Just, oh, fun. I was like, surely the guys are gonna know I'm not. Every, mes every message is like, can't wait to talk combustion engines with you. So, I, uh, oh no, right? Uh, I was like, I either need to like take that off my profile or 
I need to double down. <laughs> Which is what I've done. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if anyone here has seen my Bumble profile recently. But check it out if you get the chance. Uh, every photo now is of me with a motorcycle. I was at, <laughs> I was at my friend's house. Her husband was fixing his motorcycle. I was like, step aside. I had him position me. That looked like I was, I knew what I was doing. And then there's a picture. There's just like all these motorcycles behind me in an alley. And I'm just like, another day of work. <laughs> I <laughs> have not yet decided when I tell the guy I'm not who they think I am. I was on a date with this guy. And by the way, the date was going atrocious, like really bad. He was not on my good side, okay? And I know I come off nice, but you do not want to be on my bad side. Because if you are, my journal is going to hear, oh, yeah. So watch out. Anyway, he was just going on and on about motorcycles. Just no, no, no. That's my motorcycle impression. I'm so good at this. Okay, so anyways, I was like, I, is that why you swiped right on me? I'm sorry. He's like, no. I swiped right on you because you're blonde. I swipe right on every blonde. Shabri's not dead. Uh, and his, he was Israeli. I don't want to get canceled, but that's what the accent was. Anyways, um, he goes. Then he goes, uh, I, and this is verbatim, because I started writing things down, because I was like, if I'm not here for material, I don't know what I'm doing. He goes, by the way, how often do you color your hair? <laughs> and I said, not that often. And he goes, it's time. <laughs> I literally dyed <laughs> my hair the next day, like the very next day. Uh, <laughs> so rude. How many ladies here, how many ladies here would have just like been like, I'm out of here, I'm gonna go. Round of applause. Oh, okay. Good for you guys, good, good, good. So the rest of us, we would have stayed all night, paid the drinks and tacos. I got them tacos. I'm working on it, I'm working on it. My goal is to be a Karen one day. At the very least, Helga from Hey Arnold, you know? <laughs> and just say things to people like, move it, football head! <laughs> that was for the millennials in the room. <laughs> oh, good. I'm a proud millennial. I feel like there were perks to growing up in the 90s. Um, just me? Yep. <laughs> For example, who needs a 401k? Right? <laughs> when you have 401 beanie babies. <laughs> Princess Diana, limited edition, tag still on. We're set for life as a generation. <laughs> Anyways, there were lots of Nickelodeon fans in here, it seems like. What about Disney Channel fans? Any... Oh, wow. Good. Because that's what we're going to be talking about next. Okay. I liked, all the, I liked all the, you know, kids' channels, but I liked Disney Channel for too long. Like, most kids tap out. Not me. I kept watching all through high school. I'm just going to paint a picture for you. 
for my 15th birthday. Okay? 15. I went to the live taping of The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. And it wasn't until I got there that I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm too old to be here. Uh, <laughs> They had someone warm up the crowd, and what he did, he goes, everybody in kindergarten, stand up, first grade. Do you see where I'm going? <laughs> Literally hours later, it felt like. He's feeling bad for me at this point. We're just making eye contact. And he's like, he's like, is it, is it high school? And I just, I just proudly stood up, just towering over the whole crowd. Uh, <laughs> but then I found out there was gonna be a Q&A with the cast, and I was like, this is my moment for Zach to fall in love with me. Uh, <laughs> by the way, he was only a year and a half younger than me. I don't want to freak anyone out. But uh, I prepared, I was like, what am I gonna say? I have to sound really cool. So I stand up like with the mic, take a deep breath, pretend you're Zach, okay? And I go, <laughs> So, do you like roller coasters? <laughs> and do you, do you want to know what he said? I have no idea what he said. I blacked out. <laughs> Just with the sheer exhilarance of talking to Zach. <laughs> so, Zach, if you see this, let me know if you like roller coasters. I've been dying to know. <laughs> so, <laughs> just painting a picture how innocent I was in high school. Just anything sexual would just go right over my head. And by the way, I wasn't homeschooled. That was a joke, so. <laughs> this is me in public high school. Uh, anything sexual. This gesture, I don't know if you know it. Just locking eyes with a lot of you right now. Um, <laughs> I, thought, I thought this was rolling the dice for a, a game of Monopoly. <laughs> this one, I was like, oh, they're out of toilet paper. They have to refill the roll. And my favorite shirt in high school was from Abercrombie and Fitch. Great store, but don't watch the documentary if you're still a fan. Anyways, <laughs> on the front in just perhaps the biggest font ever was the number 69. Mm -mm. And why my mom purchased the shirt for me. I don't know. It's cruel. She knew. She knew what it meant. I was walking around just thinking I was celebrating the year we went to the moon. It is the year. It was a great year for America. But I would get, <laughs> I would get so much attention when I'd wear the shirt. All these popular guys would look at me and make a peace sign and stick their tongue out like. <laughs> I would do it back.
<laughs> I thought it was a fun handshake. I was like, oh, that's so fun. <laughs> that's so Raven, you know? <laughs> There's more, can you believe? Uh, I, <laughs> I had a Sony Ericsson phone. I did not know that that's how you pronounced it. And this guy, who I couldn't have had a bigger crush on, Logan. <laughs> Did he come tonight? Okay. Um, he was like, <laughs> he was like, cool phone. What kind do you have? And just with all the confidence in the world, I said, thanks. I have a Sony erection. Uh-oh, uh, <laughs> I'm really cool now. Like, now I'm cool. <laughs> now I drink, you know. <laughs> I was in a sorority. Okay. I usually lose people when I tell them that. Okay, good. <laughs> I was in a sorority, not by choice. My mom made me join the sorority. Same mom as the 69 purchase. Uh, she was like, she was adamant. She was like, this is gonna make your college experience super official. Super, super, superficial, superficial was the word. Uh, <laughs> She was spot on, okay? I kid you not, the very first chapter meeting, the president of our sorority, this is all true, because my sorority friends are here, so they, they know. <laughs> the president of our sorority gave a PowerPoint presentation on how to rate girls. Yeah. On a scale from one to five, because that's it. That's, <laughs> that's as high as we could count. And um, the presentation, though. Oh, the presentation was beautiful. Every number had a photo to go with it. So a five had a picture of Kate Middleton. That's royal, classy. We want, we like that. Um, and then... <laughs> A one, no joke, was a picture of a swamp creature. We didn't want those, we didn't want those. And then, um, I found out later that I was given the ranking of a three. And thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> If you'd like to know, on the PowerPoint, it was three. And then underneath, it was a picture of Mandy Moore. And then underneath, it said, cute, but forgettable. I was in and out of there so fast. Okay. I only stayed in the sorority for four years. And then I was like... I was like, this is not for me, yeah. <laughs> Get me out of here, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of getting out of here, how's that for a transition? Um, I'm, <laughs> I know we've, we've all been eyeing the guitar. <laughs> it's that time, I'm gonna end on a song. Uh, yay, everyone loves a singing comedian. Everyone loves it. Okay, so so this, this might take one more second. Okay, that didn't take as long as I thought. And are we good, like me sitting? You can't see up my skirt or anything? <laughs> <laughs> this 
this table is great. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> this is a song about me being a people pleaser. <laughs> and I really hope you like it. <laughs> Strip club. <laughs> no, no, I didn't have that reaction. Um, it was a first date. I thought it was a little inappropriate. Uh, and not even joking, he got up and had a lap dance with one of the strippers. And I swear to you, she was apologizing to me as she was dancing. <laughs> I did not tell him any of that. Instead, I was like you. I was like, Wah! She was a nervous wreck, scared to heck, strong a pleaser, people pleaser, always there for your despair, eager beaver, people pleaser. She'll sit front row, passing out dollar bills, cause she's a people pleaser. Seems healthy to me. Just the other day, I walked to my dog stand. He went number two, I threw it in the trash can. Just then, a woman walked by with an evil look in her Thanks for throwing that in my trash can. <laughs> and these are the ones on the side of the street. Okay, anyways. Uh, I walked up to the trash can. This is a true story. Um, she, she watched me dig my hand all the way to the bottom because the poop had fallen. So she's watching me dig through, you know, <laughs> used condoms and flies and other dog poop. Finally, I take it out and she's just staring at me and I'm like, what else? Does she want, does she want me to eat it? I don't know. <laughs> Luckily, she got out of there and I booked it, but I didn't dare, I didn't dare throw it away. I, I still have it. Uh, <laughs> She was a nervous wreck, scared to heck, strong a pleaser, people pleaser, always there for your despair, eager beaver, people pleaser, she'll degrade herself to digging through a trash can to take out dog poop, cause she's a people pleaser, seems healthy to me. Key change, there was a pandemic, it was worldwide, they said you shouldn't be in a crowded room full of people inside, but I got asked to go on tour with a comedian and she's like, you're gonna be performing with like really large crowds of people that may or may not be vaccinated and there's gonna be a lot of coughing going on and you're gonna like meet a lot of strangers and maybe you're gonna like hold their, shake their hands and there's not gonna be a lot of hand sanitizer. I said, okay. She's a people pleaser. Six up. 